Good morning. Um, if you relax, I'm going to relax. <laughs> so uh, I'm going to speak in English today. So uh, first of all, I'm really happy to be here. It, it's such an honor for me. So I look forward to talk to everyone during your reception afterwards. So uh, let me give you a quick self-introduction of myself. Uh, my name is Chu Farn Chung. Uh, Chu is my first name, so everybody calls me Chu San. And uh, Chung's my family name. So um, my schooling background is a little bit complex, to say the least. I, uh, I went to Malaysia for elementary school. And, um, and then I went to Singapore for my junior high. And then I went to Canada for my high school and university. And um, all of the schools that I went to, they are not international schools, but they were all local schools in every single country. So, so you can imagine the culture shock that I have with the education system every, once every few years. So as if that's not traumatic enough, as an adult, I founded an educational website called Class2. So today, I'd like to share a bit of my world with you. And uh, you know, let's explore together what 21st century education may look like. So say I want to learn something. So where do you meet a teacher? Well, 100 years ago, until my father's generation, this is how we meet a teacher. And now, wow, this is how we meet a teacher. I'm going to do this again. 100 years ago, this is how we meet a teacher. And wow, see, now we get this. We, this is how we meet a teacher. So do you notice any difference? All right, uh, I'm sorry, that was a trick question. Nothing changed. Nothing has changed. You guys were staring so hard. Nothing changed. So, see, the internet brings a lot of wonders. So, you know, um, you know let's look at how the internet has changed shopping. So 100 years ago, until my father's generation again, so this is how we do shopping. And now, well, yeah, this is how we shop. So, I remember 10 years ago, my friends swore to me. They're like, oh, I'll never, never use online shopping. You know, I want to see it, I want to feel it, I want to touch it before I buy. But now, you fast forward it, it's like, huh, what? I have to wait till the weekend to go to shop? Nah, uh, can, can, can I buy this online? You know, mentality has completely changed. So, well, yeah, something has changed. So, okay. Now, now let's look at the work environment. I, I know that a lot of you are still Tokodai students and you know you have never been sort of like you know at work before. But a hundred years ago, until my father's generation again, I'm I'm not calling him outdated, but this is how we work. But you know, now many companies allow telecommuting uh, telecommuting. You know, it's proven that productivity will increase when people work, you know happier with more flexibility. So yes, you know, the workplace has changed as well. So really, it, it's actually not fair to say, so oh, okay, actually, so what exactly has changed? So the first thing, location doesn't matter anymore. So it doesn't matter where you live. You know, you can still buy the same thing from Amazon. You know, you can live in the very rural areas or you can live in the city. You buy the same thing from Amazon. Or you can just work anywhere. Time doesn't matter. You work anytime you want. And you know, you don't have to wait for the shops to open. You know, it's called on demand. You just suddenly feel like buying like, you know, like a water tumbler. You know, like you basically at 2 a.m. in the morning, you just sort of like go buy from Amazon. It's on demand. And lastly, there is so much more freedom to choose. You know, you can get so much more things on Amazon than you can get from like, you know, just any shop, like big ones that you can go in the city. But actually it's not fair to say that education has not changed. You know, in fact, education has changed a lot and it's still changing. So there are two phases to learning. You know, first, you study with lesson materials and then, you enforce your concepts with a teacher. So, oops. So, materials have gone a long way. 
It's gone a long, long way. So 100 years ago, until, well, my father's generation again. So, so this is what we use. This is, ew, this is what we use for materials. But now, we have, well, Khan Academy. I love Khan Academy, by the way. If you have not seen Khan Academy, I really recommend you to check this out. It's really cool. You guys should check out Khan Academy. And of course, there's a lot of learning apps and, well, even ebooks. So in education, everything has changed. But when it comes to approaching a teacher, ta da! Yes, unfortunately. This is what you get. Well, OK. So how do we change the classroom? Well, firstly, I need you to forget three things. And I warn you, it's really, really, really hard to forget. Because you know we've all been through this from 7 years old to at least 22 years old. So for you guys who are doing your PhDs and your masters, it's even longer. So it's really hard to forget this. But the first and foremost important thing I want you to forget the relationship between a teacher and a student. You get this? Forget about it. Like, relationship between a teacher and a student. So, so what do I mean by this? So, in the classroom, there is a teacher, and then we have students here. And the lines separating the teachers and the students are very, very clear. So let me propose something new. So we take everyone in the world, every single person, and we give them a portal of their own. So basically, we have Kenta here. So his address is kenta.class.do. OK. And then we have Abby. We have Babar. We have, hi, Ben. It's like, hi, Gabriel. And, uh, and then we have Zihan. So now, Kenta is learning guitar from, and tra getting travel advice from someone. And he's also teaching mathematics and Japanese culture to others. OK, so this is something really new. And you know, it needs a lot more pondering. So I'm going to go really slow here. Really? Is this going to work? Well, a lot of people will have like the first thought. It's like, uh, OK, so what about the quality of the teachers? So let me give you an analogy. A Toyota versus a Ferrari. Is Toyota bad? So see, what is the top speed of Toyota and Ferrari? Does anybody know? Well, there's a lot of Tokadai students here, so you know, I'm sure one of you will know. Well, the answer, the top speed is this. <laughs> Unless you want your license taken away. So what am I trying to say? See, a Toyota is more spacious. And it's more practical. It really depends on what you use the car for. So similarly, you know, sometimes you don't need Albert Einstein or you don't need Richard Feynman to teach you physics. You know, you want a teacher who can spend time with you. So another analogy that I can give you, Yahoo auctions. It's like, you know, have you ever heard of Yahoo say, okay, you, you, you cannot be a, you, a seller. No, no, don't, don't be a seller. You know, you can't, well, Yahoo doesn't say that. So similarly, you know, we don't say, you cannot be a teacher. You know, you do not deserve to share your knowledge with anyone. Don't be a teacher. You know, you can't say that. So, but really, quality is a valid point. But we don't say, you don't be a teacher. So basically, see, you let students, like real students want to take lessons. They judge by the detailed profile of a teacher. You let them read reviews. You know, they can take free trial lessons. They can watch video greetings of the teacher. You know, they, you know, and we provide payment protection. See, this works for any online business. Amazon Shopping is doing it. Yahoo Auctions is doing it. I can't see why it can't work for education. So the second thing I'd like you to totally forget, please totally forget about this as well, is the limited number of things you can learn in a classroom. So when I say classroom, you know, this is what people would envision, like classroom, okay? See, okay, how many people here is from TI Tech? Like Tokodai, how many people here? Wow, that's a lot. So, okay, 
Now, any high school students, who's a high school student? Koko se. Ooh, okay, there you go. All right, see, okay, it's a great school. Like Tokodai, it's a great school. I'm sure one of you in the future will want to enroll in Tokodai. Am I right? So, what if I say, you know, what if I say, if you guys, you know, buy all these Tokodai people, like a coffee, or you give them 500 yen, you know, you can ask any question about Tokodai that you want. You know, they're sitting next to you, very close to you. Do you know them? Who are they? Who are they? You know, is it easy for you to contact them? No. It's such a waste. The knowledge is there. It's so close to you. You know, but, you know, you cannot tap it. So, what about something that's not very common, that you like to study? Can anybody teach Swahili here? Okay, see? See, if you cannot find someone, you know, you know, can you find somebody near you where you live? It's like, okay, I don't know anyone, so I can't learn this. So, you know, um, so it's just like shopping on Amazon or buying something from uh, Yahoo Auctions. You know, you can pick and choose. The best thing is that you can pick and choose from anyone in the world. Or, or think about it as buying an app from the iTunes store. You know, you talk to one teacher, mm, don't like it, mm, nah, not really good. And then try talking to another teacher, somebody else who can help you understand things. You know, just think about this. There's an unlimited number of people that you can ask about anything. So the last thing I want you to forget is how stuffy a classroom is. Okay? So this is one of my favorite TED Talks, I borrowed this slide from uh, Ken Robinson. If you guys have watched TED in education, you guys would know who he is. You know, what he's trying to say is that education is just like a factory. There's a complete lack of freedom. You know, you make this a chore and learning, you know, people don't enjoy learning anymore. So the commitment has made it hard for people to try something new. You know, it's, you know, just to satisfy the intellectual curiosity. You know, it makes people think twice when they want to learn something. You know, not only that, if you don't like your teacher, you're screwed. You know, how many people remember falling asleep in class? You know, that's because you don't enjoy it. You know, you don't fall asleep in Disneyland because Disneyland is really fun. So, you know, if you don't like the teacher, you're stuck with them for as long as the contract lasts. So learning is spontaneous. You know, you don't want any shackles on you. You know, you want to search, you want to engage, you want to take a lesson, and you know, if the lesson is paid, well, you pay the person. But most importantly, no commitments. You don't have to do this a second time if you don't like it. In Japanese, it's called kigarusa, okay? So, you know, I want to learn something. Okay, I want to talk to you, and you know, if I don't like it, well, uh, I'm gonna stop. But you know, if I like it, I'm gonna continue sort of learning something. That's the fun in learning. Well, so this is all very cool. But what was really preventing it from being widespread? I mean, why has nobody touched this part? Well, the answer is it's really harder. It's, it's harder than providing good materials. So, so what were the problems that I faced when I built class two? So firstly, you have to think in, into account of different currencies. As a teacher, you don't want to go, you don't, like, you know, you don't want to say, okay, uh, yeah, I'm receiving some euros today, and tomorrow I'm receiving some Singapore dollars, and you know, next week I'm going to receive some rubles. Or you know, as a student, you're going like, to go like, okay, yeah, the teacher is in Korea, so I have to pay in Korean won, and how much Korean won do I have? None. And then you have lesson problems. This is a real valid problem. You know, such as when the teacher does not show up. You know, the teacher is a thousand kilometers away from you. So are you going to get your money back? We're ha we have to protect you. And then the other thing is to in the need to install software. Not everyone can do it. I know that a lot of you are from TI Tech. It's a piece of cake for you. But, you know, it's not for everyone. You know, you tell people that they need a Skype ID and they go first go, huh, what's Skype? Okay, so we solved the first one by consolidating everything into one virtual currency. It's called class two credits. So you just deal with, you know, if you're in Japan, you pay in Japanese yen and you receive in Japanese yen, you don't have to care about anything else. 
And then you need an automatic unbiased resolution. You need that mechanism. So you know you can protect both teachers and students. And of course, no installation. It's supposed to be for everyone, not just you smart TI tech people. Everybody is able to access this. So here are two examples of people sharing the world. Um, the audio is kind of cut off, like for this one, there's some technical problems. But you know, this is a typical one. This is an American student trying to get help from a Japanese teacher. And the Japanese teacher is actually explaining you know, how to pronounce ke. Like takeshi, not takeshi. Like you know, a lot of Americans say takeshi, but he's trying to say takeshi, and he's trying to teach her. So um, unfortunately, the audio is out for this one. But this is what you know, like he was, you know, like the, the the student is trying to get help on pronunciation. You know, you can't do that, you know, like by just sort of like reading or whatever. So you actually talk to the teacher, and this is after the lesson, and you know. You kind of evaluate the teacher, you kind of like give feedback to the teacher and you say how good the teacher is. But, just as I said, don't let your imaginations limit what you can learn. Annie Waldrop, she's another teacher in class too. She's a really respected artist um, whose work is on magazines and exhibitions. Can you press the play button please? So, so this is her um, showing off her um, her, her artwork, you know, this is her giving an introduction to, to, you know, to students on how to use the pliers. You know, if you want to build today, like, you know, like a holiday decoration, like a Christmas tree with wire, or, you know, like, you know, just make anything that you fancy, you know, go talk to any. You don't have to wait once a year for TI Tech to find out an interesting world to listen to. You know, go tap into her world, you know, anytime, anytime you want. Don't have to wait for every year to tap into somebody new. So, so, so just like shopping, so just like shopping, you know, or working environments, you know, like the way people share knowledge is advancing. So, so what, what are we really trying to achieve here? So, you can be a teacher, you can be a student, of course, just like Yahoo Auctions, you can only be a buyer or a seller, but it's your choice, not someone else. You share your knowledge that is essential to humankind, not just a fixed, boring subject. And you have complete freedom. Learning should be fun. Talk to people, learn anything, you know. So let your, let, let, yeah, let your curiosity run wild. So what will the future of education become? Remember this, this mentality of shopping has completely changed very quickly in the last five years. You know, it's in your hands. Education is changing really fast. It's really not that far away. You know, you connect the unconnected. Well, no, not like this. You know, you access other people's world and you let other people access your knowledge. You know, everyone's world is really unique and interesting. Today's theme is share your world. You know, let, let me, you know, join me in making a difference. I urge you to share your world, your world. That's what it means, share your world. Thank you.